My Happy Marriage Volume 4 Review Miu Saimori is finally free for her abusive family. Her half-sister is in service to a family far away, and her father and stepmother live out in the countryside due to being disgraced. Now officially engaged to Kiyoko Kudo, the head of the powerful family, Miu decides she wants to better herself and takes lessons on how to be a proper lady to feel fit to the Lord Kudo's fiancé. As the lessons progress forever, her nightly nightmares get worse and her night health starts to decline. Just as Kudo's workload increases due to an escalation on the cross cross queries activities, at the century of all, a mysterious man named Arata comes into their lives. It seems to have a hidden agenda of a special interest in Miyu. If you've been watching the Netflix adaptation of My Happy Marriage, currently in syndication at the time of writing this review, then maybe you want to know where Volume 4 lies within the first se season. This volume is covering chapters 21 to 26 in the manga, takes place with the second half of opposite episode 8, up until the first few episodes of episode 10 of the anime. However, the manga and the anime are not identical, was the broad strokes of the story and there are there to put focus on different parts of the material to accommodate their medium. For example, for the first start, the anime version does a great job of flashing out the world, building from the power levels of the magic users to make the cross inquiries look and feel like a legitimate threat. The same goes with this part of the story. In the anime, we get a deeper look at what happened in the grave and he released a bunch of cross inquiries into the world, and the impact it has not only on the safety of the city, but also how important Kudo's role is. In the manga, however, all of this is merely a backdrop We see Kudo working hard, and are told he's coming home later every night. But we see what the cross inquiries look like how, or how much harm they're causing. This is on par, on par with the course of what we've seen in the manga so far, the magic and cross inquiries I've always felt like second fiddle to the romance and so they may see underwhelming here if you've seen the anime first. However, on the flip side, the manga girl does a much better job at developing the complex feelings of both Mia and Kudo and continues to shine how Mia's abusive past still shapes and haunts her actions while she do some of this in the anime adaptation. The manga goes much deeper and a lot of emotional gut punches and her character emotionally driven hit hard here in the manga version as a result. Let's start with Kudo at this time. His role in this book has been, has been hands off regarding Mio, but it doesn't come off as cold or abusive. His unit oversees protecting the world from cross inquiries, so their sudden escape has put him under a lot of pressure to get them under control, especially as his audience with the prince in the last volume warned him that many lives will be lost if he makes a mistake. He's also a good manager, trying to make sure his staff gets stagger shifts and rest in between, while sacrificing his own time to rest. But then there's Mio. He's been trying to ease her nightmares, but as a shift get worse, he's no longer able to be by her side. He continues to discreetly investigate her family and try to find out more about her gifts, thinking it's a cause of her nightmares. When the mysterious Arata Suruki comes into his office, first on the pretense of helping him with the cross inquiries, but then criticizes his ignorance of Mio's health, Koto is distraught and realizes he's been going about this the wrong way. When it all comes to the head between him and Mio's, he realizes that despite Mio's family not being far away, the effects of the abuse still linger. You can just assume she will tell him she's not alright. It's a personal growth for the character that's been great to see in Kudo. Mio's putting in everything she can be to be a good fiancé, but now Kudo needs to do the same learn how to be a good fiancé to her. And there's Mio. She's now away from her abusive home and has found her place by Kudo's side, but being in a happy environment doesn't automatically cure a childhood of trauma. It may help the traumatized person learn to relax over time, but Mia has learned from years of abuse to hide her emotions and not to bother those around her, so understandably, but she sees Kodo getting increasingly along working hours and showing signs of tiredness. Miyu reacts as she always has, stayed out of the way and doesn't share anything that could in her mind, imposed to him. It's heartbreaking to watch her suffer alone and see nightmare visions of her family Retaliating that she's been told her whole life, making her think that Kodo will ever eventually turn on her too. When the pair clash towards the end, and when she sleeps out her worst fears, your heart breaks for her, and you can feel her world world shatter around her. This is the point where the pair reach the lowest wet moment and must grow and heal together to make their marriage work. But finding out more about the past really help. We'll see in the next volume. We'll also get a small side story at the end, courtesy of the light novel author. This time, from the point of view of Kodo's sister, Hazen recalls the moment when Kundo asked her to shoot our Mio and reflects on her childhood a bit. It's a nice moment for the character and to also meet you. 
see me from the fresh pair of eyes. A lot happens within this volume, but it's paced very well as a pair, despite having overcome a large hurdle already. I realize there's a lot more that needs to learn to get the happy part of happy marriage. It's an emotional gripping volume and a quality series. It's providing more for the reader outside the Cinderella story. It started off with it. 9 out of 10.